بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد عباد الله اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار I want to mention a hadith to begin with this talk bi-idnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you to remember this hadith if everything that we said as speakers, if everything that has been mentioned tonight, it did not remain with you, please, I want you to remember this hadith. At least you can say at the end of the day, I went to a conference and I learned this hadith. For the students of knowledge, did had this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari min hadith Aba Huraira. And this hadith is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want you to reflect on this hadith. Yaqood the Messenger of Allah qal, Yaqool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. He said, Allah said, I am to my servant what he thinks of me. I am to my servant what he thinks of me. In Musnadi Ahmad, it says, Falyadhunnu abdi bi ma sha. He said, let my servant, let that being that I've created, let him or her think of me as they wish. And then he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is saying, فَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِهِ ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ He said, when my servant... This servant that I created, this person that I've created, when he remembers me alone, when he sits and he reflects on the creation of the universe, and he thinks what Allah blessed him with, and he says, Subhanallah, look all these blessings that Allah has given me. Look the blessings of health that other people are going to pay for it. They're traveling from continent to a continent to get treatment. But I got it and I have it and I'm not paying for it. When he reflects on himself and he says, Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to stand on my feet. And I do not need someone to push me on a wheelchair to take me to the washroom. And this person, he is not ver verbalizing this, but he's thinking internally what Allah has blessed him with. What Allah has blessed him with. Allah says, I will remember him in a way that fits His Majesty, in a way that fits Allah, I'll remember Him in turn. And then He says, Allah said, وَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئِن 
But if my servant remembers me in a public gathering as such, as such, قال ذكرته في ملأ خير من. He said, then I will remember him. I will remember that servant of mine who remembered me in a public place. I will remember him in a gathering which is better than his. See, now look, Sheikh Asim al Hakim was right here. And he was remembering Allah. He was quoting from the Quran and he was remembering Allah in a public podium. You know what Allah said? I'll remember my servant Asim al Hakim in a gathering better than his. You have honorable guests, you have beautiful Muslims and beautiful Muslimat. You have beautiful volunteers, brothers and sisters who've been sweating till that this conference was established. You have a system in place. Allah said, since he mentioned me in a public place, I will mention him in a gathering, ulama, they said, in the gatherings of malaika. Subhanallah. Allah just mentioned Asim al-Hakim in the presence of malaika. And then Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قال, إن تقرب إلي بالشبر تقربت إليه الذراع. He said, if my servant, if my slave comes toward me in a distance of hand span, I'll come to him in a distance of arm span. وإن تقرب إلي الذراع تقربت. And he said, if he, يعني look at the distance. If you come to Allah this much, Allah comes to you that much. And then he said, وَإِنْ أَتَانِي يَمْشِي If he walks towards me, I will run towards him. SubhanAllah. I will run. If you come towards Allah, if you say, Ya Allah, I have sinned. I wronged myself. I did everything wrong. You ask me not to do, but I did it. You ask me not to say it, but, but I said it. Ya Allah, I'm here. And Allah will run. The mercy of Allah will run towards you. The title of the talk is Raised to Righteousness. Now, who are you raising to? You, who are you raising to? You're raising, you're running to Allah. Look, in the city of Dubai, of Dubai, how many Muslims are there? In this hall, how many Muslims are there? Do you think you're here because of coincidence? Do you think you're here because your friend invited you? Do you think you're here because you came to listen to Sheikh Mashar al-Afasi? You want to hear the beautiful recitation and your nerves drag you? You think you're here maybe because Sheikh Mufti Mink, Ismail Mink is here and you want to take personal, you know, you want to have that, you know, snap, or you can have the snap with the Sheikh, you know, selfie with the Sheikh. No, Allah chose you. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَعُ Just get out of the hall and see how many people out there. Look how many Muslims are walking like Safa wa Marwa, you know, back and forth, back and forth, you know, looking at the sign where it says Islamic conference, but not walking in. Look how many people are doing window shopping, but they're not walking in because at this Night in this if at this event, Allah has chose you. You should say Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah. You should say Alhamdulillah. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَعُ. And then Allah is telling us, 
It's telling us. Fafirru ila Allah. Fafirru, flee to your Lord. Not run away from Him, but run to Him. Fafirru ila Allah. Yani ya ibad Allah. When you sin, who do you go to? When you wrong yourself, who do you go to? Do you go to psychiatrists? Do you go to psychologists? Do you go to a counselor? Do you go to a friend? And do you go to an imam and tell him your problem? Or you run to Allah? Fafirru ila Allah. Allah said, flee to Allah, run to me, come to me. I will forgive you, my, my servant. Ya abdi, oh my slave, I will forgive you. Whatever you've done does not matter. Come to me. So here tonight, we want to stand in that line. And like someone, like a marathon runners, we want to run to Allah. And Allah said in the Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّةِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْبِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِ Allah is saying, وَسَارِعُوا Compete with one another. Compete. That's a competition. And you don't say, you know, I want to sit back. Some of us, we say, I just want to sit back. I want to sit right next to the door. So when my sheikh finished, why my favorite speaker finished, I want to just get out of this place because I did not come for Allah. I came for that person. Allah is saying, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Rather, wasari'u. Compete with one another. Look at the person who's sitting next to you and say to yourself, I want to earn. I want to earn. I want to earn. I want to get hasanat. I want to get ajr more than him. I want to get reward more than the person who's sitting next to me. I want Allah to love me more than anyone else. And that is not a sin. يقول الإمام الشافعي في القربات في القربات he said when comes to a righteous deeds he said do not give anybody a chance don't give anyone a chance if there is a furja if there's an opening in the front row don't say I'm giving to a sheikh so and so you go ahead and stand in the front row I'll pray in the second row Imam Shafi he say Inna min iman, in minhatu min Allah it is indeed a gift from Allah so what you do you jump into that opportunity Run to the forgiveness. Compete on that platform. See, what we do, we compete in dunya. <laughs> we compete in dunya. I don't want anybody to drive a better vehicle than mine. I don't want anyone to have a bigger house than mine. I don't want anyone to have a larger account in the bank than I am or I have. But no, no, no. You should, you and I should say, I don't want anyone to have hasanat more than I do. I don't want to have has. I don't want, I, you can have this dunya. Because dunya, dunya, it means something that is low. In the translation of dunya, it means something that is so low, so close, it is useless. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was describing this dunya and akhirah, and hereafter, you know what he said? قَالَ مَنْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرُ هَمِّهِ He said, if this dunya is your greatest concern, 
If this dunya is your greatest concern, you want the platform, you want this dunya. You know what Allah said? You know what the messenger of Allah said? You want this dunya, Allah said. You want this dunya? Then listen to this. He said Allah will place poverty, will place the need of this dunya between your eyes. So when you turn to your right, what do you see? Do you see Jannah? Do you see Masjid? Do you see a needy person? Do you see the Mus'haf? Do you see? No, you just see poverty and need. And then you look right in front of you, what do you see? Nothing but poverty and need. When you look to your right, what do you see? Nothing but poverty and need. Even though you have everything. Everything. You know, subhanAllah, last night, we were eating in a restaurant. We were eating in a restaurant. And then, this brother, out of the blue, and subhanAllah, look at dunya. This, this brother, out of the blue, we finished our food, we left some over, you know, because, you know, we, we really don't appreciate the ni'mah of Allah. But this, this brother just walked in, and while we were chit-chatting, he said, Assalamu alaikum, alaykum as -salam. can I eat with you? And I didn't know how to respond. Can I eat with you? And I said, yes, yes. And I said, you know what? I want to order a meal for you. He said, no, ya akhi, I want this. I want, it's last night, I want this. I said, ya akhi, you know, no, wallahi, ya akhi, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll order a fresh one. He said, no, dunya, it's not worth it. I want this. And then he sat down, and to my surprise, and I was shocked. He asked the waiter, and he said, just give me a spoon. And he took that spoon, and I thought, this, you know, this guy is just joking, he's fooling around with me. And he started eating. And he started eating. And he said, I just arrived from Syria. I came from Syria right now, from the airport to this restaurant. And I can reflect and I see the food that I just saw as left over, that the waiter would come and toss it over to a garbage bin for a Syrian brother, for Syrians in that. This is a lot. And for him, dunya is not worth it. And I reflect the day where, and I said to him, Akhi, I really appreciate what you just taught us. And I said, I remember when Somalia had a civil war. And as a child, my family had to grab my hand and have to grab the hands of my siblings. And we had to run and flee. I understand the need. But that was a person whose dunya was not his concern because the messenger of Allah said, if dunya is your biggest concern, no matter how rich you are, no matter what you have, you will only see poverty. Do you know the people who commit a suicide most? Do you know the people who always been treated by, you know, professionals because they have anxiety, stress, and whatsoever, are those who are rich and famous? They're rich and famous, but he's stressed. He's a rich and famous, but he's taking pills to fall asleep. Why? Because dunya is right here. He cannot see anything. 
But the messenger of Allah said, وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرَ هَمِّي If hereafter, if is pleasing Allah is your greatest concern, then he said, Allah will place richness between your eyes like that Syrian brother. And he said, and this dunya will come to you willingly. This dunya will come to you willingly. So when Allah said, وَثَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ It means we have to compete towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how? And I know the time is running and you've been sitting here for very long. But how? How? How can I compete towards Allah? And, comp and compete towards maghfira, forgiveness of Allah and paradise? For simple things. Do I have to perform Hajj every year? No. Do I have to fast every other day? No. Do I have to memorize the Quran? No. Do I have to walk away from my wealth and just be like Abu Bakr as Siddiq? No, again. But you can do simple things. Like, you want Allah to love you and you walk towards Allah? Smile. Smile. Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَأَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ And the, one of the, the most beloved deed in the sight of Allah is a joy that you bring to a Muslim. And when you smile, you bring a joy to the person who is next to you. That's what happens. Smile. How difficult that is. See, that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he rewarded you by telling you, that وَتَبَسُّمُكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ الصَّدَقَ Smiling in the face of you Muslim brother is a charity. You know, unfortunately, and I always say this, unfortunately, you know, the people who have least smiles are Muslims. You know that? Do you know that? People who smile least are Muslims. If you smile, they will say, Lish, why? Why are you smiling? You know, I, I'm from Canada. And a Canadian, very friendly people. Very nice people. You know, you walk by one of them, you're passing one of them, and it is a common courtesy. It's a culture of the society that you have direct eye contact with that person, and you say, hello, hello, and you move on. But you got to smile. You got to smile. I came back to the Muslim countries, and I'm all about a smile. And then I pass by a Muslim, and I say, Salaam Alaikum. And he's like, Alaikum as -salam. And then he's like, okay. And I moved on. And I, the third one, the fourth, and the fifth guy, he, you know, I smile. And then I still remember, Wallahi. And he said, Ta'al, 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 ta'al. Come, come. I said, yeah, why are you smiling? What is wrong with you? Why are you smiling? I said, the messenger of Allah said, smiling in the face of your Muslim brother is a charity. Keep moving, keep moving, keep going. Islamically, it's the other way around. I only see the brothers only, they smile when they see beautiful girls, mashallah. Their ikhlas only comes down when the beautiful girls are around, mashallah. They smile and sincere. No. See, what do you do? Easiest thing. You come and you smile on the face of your Muslim brother. That is a sadaq. That is a musara. You see a miskin. Subhanallah. You see a miskin. And you don't judge. We should not judge anybody. You don't say this guy he has so much money. He has stashes of money. This guy he is piling money. He's just putting up a face. It is not for you and I to judge. 
But you see a miskin, you see a needy. How much would it cost you to put your hands in your pocket and you take a dinar or a dirham or a rial or a dollar or a ruby or whatever and you give it to him? And you give it to that person. That is wasari'u ila maghfirati min rabbi. Wasari'u. How difficult is that? You, know, you see a person who is struggling with, with, with simple things. You help. Now that is a wasari'u ila maghfirati min rabbi. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Jannah. Jannah. It's not built on major deeds like Hajj or you know fasting. Yes, it is indeed part of your essential part of your essential core and the core of your religion. But simple things that you do. The Sadaqah, there is this show that I watch. This show that I watch. And this show, what they do, they rescue dogs. Stray dogs, abused animals, they rescue animals. And the people who are rescuing animals, they're not Muslims. They're not Muslims. And you see, subhanAllah, you see in Muslim countries, when we were growing up, if I see a dog, that means to pick up a rock and stone that dog like it's shaitan. Wallahi, when I see a dog that's like, that's my jamara. I'm going, this is a jamara kubra. I'm going to stone this shaitan to death. This, that shouldn't be. Because when we grew up and we learned the deen of Allah, we learned that the messenger of Allah said a prostitute when Allah forgave her and she went to paradise because she cared for a dog. She cared for an animal. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mad at one of the sahabi who took bird from a bird, its nest, and babies. Who, who, who scared this bird for its, concerning this baby? And one of the sahabi said, I did it, Ya Rasulullah. He said, take them back. Take them back. You can do simple things. You can do simple things for your spouses. You can do simple things for your husband, for your wife, for your parents, for your child, for your neighbors. I live in the West. I live in Canada. And your neighbor, you know, subhanAllah, neighbor, not Muslim neighbor, they respect your privacy. They respect the time. They respect you. You know, and sometimes, you know, even Christmas time, they will send you a thank you or Christmas, Merry Christmas card. In Islam, it is for us to be good to our neighbors. It's to be good to our neighbors. And wallahi, and thumma wallahi, and thumma wallahi, nothing is more powerful, nothing is more powerful than the manners of Muslims in terms of da'wah. Nothing is more powerful. When a non-Muslim sees you as a good Muslim, smiling, you're caring for their, you know, you know cat or whatever, you know, you, you help. That is wasari'u ila maghfirat min rabbikum. They will come to the fold of Islam as our grandfathers and great-grandfathers did in form of da'wah. I will conclude with this, Ya Ibadullah. I know you've been sitting here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And I know I want you to stay here until the brother concludes the event. Because when you've done that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the angels, Look at my servants. Allah will say, Look at my servants. They were sitting there to remember me. And then Allah will say, I make you my witnesses of my angels that I have forgiven all of them. So wait for the forgiveness of Allah and don't rush because he's going to come and conclude this with Ibn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the way wasari'u ila maghfirat min rabbikum through the raise to righteousness is one thing I will conclude and that is forgive everyone forgive everyone 
Those who did you wrong, forgive them. Those who wronged you, forgive them. And I will conclude with the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith al-Ansari. Hadith al-Ansari, the messenger of Allah is sitting in a halaqa. And all of a sudden, without announcement, without introduction, the messenger of Allah says, through that door, a man from paradise will come through. From that door, يقول عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص and I wanted to see this man that the messenger of Allah said about him he is from the people of Jannah I want to see this man and look at this description فقال فدخل رجل من الأنصار a man from the Ansar walked in carrying his shoes and his armpit his beard is dripping with water for making wudu and he plays his shoes his sandals right next to him and he prayed two rak'ah and then he left. The man was not known for his, you know, generosity. He was not known for his, you know, sadaqah, for his Quran. He was just a simple man. And then the messenger, or that, that man left. Then the second day, the messenger of Allah said, now a man from paradise will walk through that door. And then the same man with the same description walked in. And the third day, the same thing happened. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asi said, I want to know why this man is so special. Why is he so special? Three days in a row. And I want you to, rem I want to remind you this. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As was a man who used to pray Qiyam al layl all night long. It was a young man who used to fast every single day. It was a man who used to finish the whole Quran in one night. So he said to himself, why would this man win this award three days in a row? I want to know his secret. So he followed, he said to him, I want to be your guest for three days. So he hosted him. He said, welcome. You want to be my guest? Because Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, he wants to examine this man under microscope. So he said he slept the first night. He didn't do anything. I pray Qiyam al-Layl. I read Quran. I'm fasting tomorrow. But the man did not do any of that. Except when he's turning in the middle of the night, he remembers Allah. He said, I watched him for three days. At the, at the end of the third day, I said to him, listen, I didn't need you to hose me, but this is what I heard the messenger of Allah saying, and I want to know your secret. See, now if you, have, if you see a successful man, what do you do? You want to know the secret of his recipe. You want to know how he became rich. You want to know what he did to achieve this wealth. What he did to get his degree. What he did to have this real estate. But this, the Sahabi, he said, I want to know his secret. I want to know the recipe, the secret of his recipe. So I said to him, what do you do different? It is what you saw. And then he said, I left. But before I step out of the door, he said, come back. I do one thing different. He said, what is it? He said, every night before I sleep, I clean my heart. I don't keep anything in my heart towards anyone. Anyone. I forgive all the Muslims and the non-Muslims. I, I forgive all those who did me wrong. And I sleep at night. Knowing that there's no one in my heart that I have ill feeling towards. Then Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, qala huwa dhak. This is one thing that is difficult to achieve. So what I'm telling you tonight, you know, forgive everyone. If you want the maghfirah of Allah, if you want the forgiveness of Allah, if you want to win this race, if you want to reach the end line on this marathon, which just started tonight, I want you to forgive everyone. Everyone. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Wa jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.